In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, a very, very warm welcome to all of you who gather today with Matt to celebrate this important day in his life. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to our Superior General, Father Richard Warner, um, who is with us today to celebrate on this occasion. My sisters and brothers, the consecration and the commitment that our brother makes this day is rooted in the commitment we all share as Christians through the sacrament of baptism. Let us pray that as this water is blessed, we may have formed in us by God's loving spirit the living likeness of Jesus Christ. Holy and eternal God, we give you thanks for our creation and redemption. We ask you to send your living spirit upon this water and upon all here present who have found rebirth in the font of your love. Renew the living spring of your life in our brother, who this day offers himself to you with a willing and joyful spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have caused the grace of baptism to bear such fruit in your servants, servant that he now strives to follow your Son more closely. Let him rightly aim at true evangelical perfection and increase the holiness and apostolic zeal of your church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah, son of a priestly family in the land of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. No one fear, have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words into your mouth. This day I set you over nations and over kingdoms to root up and to tear down, to destroy and to demolish, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The disciples devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. says the Lord. You who are my disciples, I make known to you all I've learned from my Father. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. The young man asked him, which one? And Jesus replied, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man looked sad at Jesus. All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell whatever you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away very sad for he had many possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, amen I say to you, it will be very hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and they said, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, What we have given up everything and followed you, what will there be for us? 
Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated in his throne of glory, will yourselves be on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or land, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundredfold more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are called, the first to the last, because the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, we all gather here in this basilica. Matt's parents and family, his brothers and sisters in Holy Cross, his friends, his colleagues, those who have traveled here to represent the Holy Cross community in Mexico, where Matt will serve next year. We all gather. We come to support him as he stands before the Lord to pledge his life commitment as a disciple of Christ by living that discipleship through the evangelical councils. We are here to support him as he makes his perpetual profession in Holy Cross, gathered with his brothers with whom he pledges to work for the mission of the Lord, doing it together in order to build up the kingdom of God. The readings that Matt chose for us for this liturgy speak poignantly to what he is about to do here in a few moments. Our first reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah describes the call of the young Jeremiah to be the mouthpiece of the Lord to his people. The Lord declared to Jeremiah that he had been chosen and he had been dedicated before he was even born to be a prophet to the nations. Quite understandably, Jeremiah, very unnerved, pleads to the Lord that he's too young. And even worse, he's not prepared. The Lord's response, though reassuring to Jeremiah, is noticeably quite persistent. He dismisses the young man's concerns about his youth and his ability. The Lord's mission is then revealed to Jeremiah, and he is told by the Lord himself to trust in him, to trust in him, because he would be with him and deliver him in his ministry. Young Matthew's journey to this day started 28 years ago when he was claimed for Christ at his baptism. As he grew in faith and confirmed that faith as his very own, his Lord's call to him in discipleship began to take shape in the eyes and the ears of his heart. But it goes without saying that Matt, like Jeremiah, surely had more than one of those moments over the years when he too proclaimed to the Lord, Whoa, I'm too young. I do service. I pray. I like my life. I'm diligent. I'm analytical and I plan. And I just don't see this in my plan. In those instances, I also believe Matthew, like Jeremiah, encountered the persistent Lord, and he encountered the promise of that same Lord to remain with him during his life of discipleship. 
Our second reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles, that great story of the early post-resurrection church. This passage that we hear today describes the characteristics of that new community, which existed solely to proclaim the mission of Jesus Christ in and to the world. The passage we hear today characterizes that community very basically as a community of prayer, a Eucharistic community, a community of common table, and a community of common purse. The Christian community then was to be devoted solely to the gospel and marked by a clear sincerity of heart. Matt's journey of discipleship led him to the Holy Cross community, a group of men who choose to live lives of discipleship through the profession of the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, and some of whom also answer a call to serve the Lord through the sacrament of holy orders. Matt learned early on that a clear tenant of the mission of Holy Cross is a preferential option for the poor, a tenant, I might add, which he has embraced with great zeal in his own life and ministry. He also learned early on of the exhortation of our blessed founder, Basil Moreau, that all men of Holy Cross are to have trust in divine providence, confidence in the cross of Christ as our only hope, and a zeal for the work of the mission. On this journey, Matt has also found that the mission of Holy Cross is not one that belongs to us as autonomous individuals. Rather, the mission of our community, which is the Lord's, is a mission that we hold in common and that is nurtured by our common prayer, our common life, and our common effort. All of this with the Eucharist at the center. Our Holy Cross constitutions liken our community to that of the one that we just heard about in today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And just as our vows bind us to the Lord in a unique and intentional way, they also bind us to one another in a way that affords each of us the grace to allow our own individual desires to give way to the common good for the sake of the mission of the community. Matt's journey in discipleship has led him to reaffirm, reaffirm and to reinforce the promises of his baptism when he made the decision to live according to the Evangelical Councils that first time in August of 2008. And in these three years of casting his lot with his brothers in Holy Cross, he has heard the Lord's call of choosing him in a deeply profound way through his life as a religious. He has embraced the graces of our life as well as the cross of Christ that we are called to embrace as our only hope. Matt chose a reading from Matthew's Gospel for today that illustrates the mandate placed upon every baptized Christian who claims discipleship with Christ. And it is also most vividly an illustration of the choice that is publicly made when one professes to live according to the evangelical councils. In this encounter between Jesus and the rich young man, we see the clear and unequivocal difference between that which binds us by the laws of the world and that which binds us by the law of Christ. The young man tells Jesus that he's seeking eternal life, and he asks what he must do to get it. He asks a question that has as its assumption that by doing a certain set of actions, there will be a result that will be the attaining of eternal life. It's not the assumption that Jesus agreed with. We might perhaps understand it best by the image of the balance sheet 
with one amassing life's credits and debits. Jesus answers that young man on his own terms by telling him to keep the commandments. But interestingly enough, Jesus cites the second five commandments of the Decalogue, those which govern our duty to other human beings. These commandments address our personal relationships. They address our attitudes about all things that are human. The young man answers that he's kept the commandments, but he also realizes that there's something else that he thinks he should have and realizes that he doesn't, so he asks what else he should do. So Jesus tells him to go sell everything he has, give it to the poor, and then come and follow him, and he would amass a treasure, but one that would be in heaven. There is another account of this very encounter between the young man and Jesus that is found in one of the early traditions of the church. And I think it sheds light on what Jesus is implying here in the Gospel of Matthew, because it says it bluntly. In this account, there's an additional response of Jesus to the young man. In it, Jesus tells the young man that he claims that he has kept the law and the prophets. And he then goes on to tell him that it is written in the law and the prophets that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, but many of your brethren, sons of Abraham, are clad in filth, dying of hunger, and your own house is filled with riches, with nothing ever going to the brethren. Jesus attempts through challenge to show the young man that he may indeed be keeping the letter of the law, but it's the spiritual law by which we gain eternal life. The attitude, the life stance of that rich young man, the, the, the stance he displayed was wrong-headed in the words of Jesus and defies the moral law that was set down by him. And as a result, Jesus challenges him to give it all away. And he couldn't do it. And he couldn't do it because he saw his possessions as solely existing for his own good and his own comfort. They became ends in themselves, and thus they became the very chain and albatross around his neck that could not be broken whereas giving them away to those who were in need would have been as key to the very thing which he desired, which is eternal life. The reading goes beyond to show the teachings of Jesus warn us that, the dangers, that there are dangers in great possessions. The gospel never says that those with possessions are turned away or are shut out from eternal life, but it tells us that these things can lead us to attitudes that block us from true discipleship. Whether material goods or possessions like status and power, we can be lured into false independence from the things of eternity, including God. We can be shackled to things that in the end gain us nothing. We can forget that we lose what we keep and we gain what we give away. And we can fall prey to that old saying, enough is always a little more than a person has. Finally, Peter comes forward and quite bluntly asks Jesus what they should expect to get out of their faithful discipleship in him. Jesus does not scold or rebuke Peter as we might expect and, what he, and, when he, and where he has done it in other places in the scriptures. Rather, Jesus answered the question for those present. And he lays out a number of principles about true discipleship in the Christian life. He very simply declares in his response that those who pick up the cause of Christ and share in preaching that cause will also share in his victory. And he who bears the cross will wear the crown. We hear that the true Christian will always receive more than he or she ever had to give up but the reward will not be material. 
Rather, the reward will be a new fellowship that is human and recognized in the Christian community and is divine in its relationship to the Lord in eternity. And at the very end of that passage, Jesus sets down a further principle that God's standards and judgments are different than that of the world. And some that were first in the world will not be first in eternity. At our religious profession in Holy Cross, we pledge to divest ourselves of the very things that are most valued in our world. To do so frees us to be about the work of the mission of the Lord. To do so heightens our awareness to those who are most poor in our midst. To do so ensures our dependence on the Lord and dependence on those who have made that same pledge by professing the same vows. Matt comes here today to make that pledge again. This time, it is a life pledge that binds him to our Lord and to his brothers in Holy Cross for the sake of the kingdom forever. Matt, what you are about to profess is of great witness to us. It is a great gift to the church. You have walked with us for these past few years and now join the ranks of those whose footsteps form the path for all those who will come in the years ahead. The legacy of those who have gone before you is now yours to preserve and to share with those who come after you. Remember, too, that today is a beginning, not an end. I simply remind you of what our constitutions tell us. We pronounce our vows in a moment, but living them for the sake of the kingdom is the work of a lifetime. That fulfillment demands of us more than a mere wish, more even than the firm decision. It demands the conversion of our habits, our character, our attitudes, and our desires. So, my brother, this is a joyous day. It's a solemn day. It's truly a day of the Lord. Matt, you can count on our support. You can count on our continued prayers. You can count on our challenges. And you can be most assured of our fraternal love. Matt, may the Lord who called you in the beginning bless you for your response to his beckon. And may that same Lord shower you with the grace of perseverance and fidelity. Let him who is to make profession of perpetual vows please rise. Mr. Matthew Creighton Pizarro of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Present. Matthew, what do you ask of God's Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross? To persevere all the days of my life in the service of the Lord, in communion with my brothers of Holy Cross, with whom I wish to live my sisters and brothers gathered here in prayer God has called this man to follow Christ as a religious of Holy Cross in our joy let us express our thanks for this sign of God's love to us
Matthew, in baptism you have already died to sin and have been consecrated to God's service. Are you now resolved to commit yourself forever to single-hearted intimacy with God, to trusting dependence upon God, and to willingly surrender to God? I am resolved. Are you resolved in consecrated celibacy to love with the freedom, the openness, and the availability that can be recognized as a sign of the kingdom? Are you resolved in consecrated poverty to seek to share the lot of the poor and to unite in their cause, trusting in the Lord as provider? I am resolved. Are you resolved in consecrated obedience to join with our brothers in community and with the whole church in the search for God's will? I am resolved. Are you resolved to give over your whole life in generous service to all people to serve them out of your own faith that the Lord has loved us and died for us and risen for us and that he offers us a share in his life, a life more powerful and enduring than any sin or death. I am resolved. May Almighty God grant you the grace to fulfill what you resolve through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, let us pray through the intercession of Mary and all the saints that God the Almighty may bless and strengthen this servant who has been called to follow Christ in the religious life. and Boniface, Cecilia Edward the Confessor, Rose of Lima and Catherine, Therese of Lisieux, Prince de Paul, Blessed Miguel, Pro, John Chrysostom and Justin, Agatha and Agnes.
Almighty and eternal God, listen to the prayers of your people. May the fire of your Holy Spirit purify your servant from all sin and make him burn with the fervor of divine love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Matthew, I can attest to your willingness to follow in the footsteps of our holy founder, Basil Anthony Moreau, and to embrace forever our religious life. I invite you now to come forward and in the presence of this community and almighty God to publicly profess your vows. I, Matthew Creighton Kazora, CSC, kneel in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in the assembly of his church, amid my brothers in Holy Cross, and before you, Reverend David T. Tyson, CSC, Provincial of the United States Province, to profess my dedication and my vows. I believe that I have been called by the Father and led by the Spirit with Jesus Christ in my heart to offer my life and my life's work in service of the Lord for the needs of the church and the world. Therefore, I make to God forever the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience according to the constitutions of the Congregation of Holy Cross. With the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may the God who calls and invites me to make this commitment strengthen and protect me to be faithful to it. Matthew, in the name of the Church and of the Congregation of Holy Cross, I accept your vows, and may the God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Lord God, source of holiness and growth in your church, all creation owes you its debt of praise. In the beginning of time, you created the world to share your joy. When it lay broken by Adam's sin, you promised a new heaven and a new earth. You entrusted the earth to, care, to the care of men and women to be made fruitful by their work. Living in this world, they were to direct their steps to the heavenly city. By your sacraments, you make us your children and welcome us into your church. 
you distribute among us the many gifts of your spirit. Some serve you in chaste marriage, others forgo marriage for the sake of the kingdom. Father, we now pray you send your spirit upon this servant of yours who has committed himself with steadfast faith to the words of Christ your Son. Strengthen his understanding and direct his life by the teaching of the gospel. May the law of love rule in his heart and concern for others distinguish his life so that he may bear witness to you, the one true God, and to your infinite love for all people. By his courage in daily trials, may he receive, even in this life, your promised hundredfold, and at the end, an everlasting reward in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Matt, receive the image of the crucified. He saved the world by his cross and invites you to share in the mission of service to his people. Follow in his footsteps, and you will come to share in the glory of his resurrection. And Matthew, we confirm that you are now one with us forever as members of the Congregation of Holy Cross, sharing all things in common with us now and in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. Please be seated.
My sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Lord, 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 accept the gifts and the vows of your servant. Strengthen him by your love as he professes the evangelical counsels. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He came, the Son of a Virgin Mother, named those blessed who were pure of heart, and taught by his whole life the perfection of chastity. He chose always to fulfill your holy will and become obedient even to dying for us, offering himself to you as a perfect oblation. He consecrated more closely to your service those who leave all things for your sake and promised that they would find a heavenly treasure. And so we join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Andre Bisset, Blessed Basil Moreau, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and in love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Benedict, our Bishop Kevin, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Strengthen also this servant of yours in his holy purpose, for he has dedicated himself by the bonds of religious consecration to serve you always. Grant that he may always give witness in your church to the new and eternal life won by Christ's redemption. Father, hear the prayers of the family that you have gathered here before you. In mercy and in love, unite all your children wherever they may be. And welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory, through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. gathered together in faith. Let us pray with hope and with confidence in the words that Jesus gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always.
This is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sins of the world. And happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be.
Let us pray. Lord, as we share these sacred mysteries, we pray for your servant Matthew, who is bound to you by his holy offering. Increase in him the fire of your Holy Spirit and unite in him, unite him in eternal fellowship with your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. My name is Father Pete Jarrett. I'm rector of Morrow Seminary. On behalf of Matt and the Moreau and Old College communities, just to thank you again for your presence here today. Thank Dr. Andrew McShane and the Notre Dame Liturgical Choir for all their hard work and for their beautiful music, Father Rocca, John Zach, and the Basilica staff as well. Again, Father, thanks to Father Warner, our Superior General, for being here. As you would imagine, with the storms in the east, travel is not very easy today. I'd like to thank, uh, in a special way, our provincial father, David Tyson. He's coming to the end of nine years serving us as our provincial superior, so in a sense, this is his final, final vows. And Father Tyson's care and concern for the formation programs throughout the United States province, Mexico, the District of East Africa, um, has meant a lot to our ability to attract holy and good young men and to train them and to be able to bring them to this point as mad as today to service in the church. So thank you, Father Tyson, for your presence and for all you've done. I had the great privilege of inviting you to a reception immediately following our ceremony and it will be in the main building, the Golden Dome, just out this side of the Basilica. We'll be serving food and refreshments, vast amounts, on multiple floors of the building. So please go over right after the ceremony. And if you need an elevator, if you go just around to the north part of the building, there will be people to direct you. Thank you. Matt, you have come before the altar of God, and now we will give you our blessing. Well, I would also to like to invite all of you to extend your hand in blessing with me over our newly professed. God inspires all holy desires and brings them to fulfillment. May God's grace always keep you, our brother, faithful to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the evangelical life in Holy Cross. Amen. May God keep you single-hearted in your consecrated celibacy, generous in your poverty, and wholehearted in your obedience. Amen. And may God always keep you stiff in faith, joyful in hope, and enduring in love. Amen. And may all of you who have taken part in this celebration receive the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.